If you're interested in LSU student athletes, they're actually out here now if we want to get started earlier. Good afternoon. Welcome to Milwaukee. If you weren't here this morning, I'm Dennis Krause. And when you have a question, please raise your hand and wait for the microphone. And we ask that you identify yourself and your media outlet. With us, Darius Days, Tari Eason, and Xavier Pinson, LSU student athletes. Questions, please. Hey, Darius, Jared Joseph, WVLA in Baton Rouge. Uh, I guess we'll just come out swinging at the fence here. How are you feeling with the team and just how things have been since what happened with Will Wade this past Saturday? I feel pretty confident in the team. You know, we've been working hard. Just not letting the distractions, you know, keep us away from our goal is winning the national championship. Um, we've been locked in with each other, you know, lean on each other, you know, this time of, you know, distraction, but, you know, we're going to be all right. Lee, how has this felt in regards to maybe a four circle moment, the way things happened during your freshman year and then having a deja vu with it again? How similar are the situations? Um, it's, it's very similar, but you know, last time, you know, Coach Wade didn't come back, but I mean, it's a, it's a very touching situation. You know, I miss him. You know, our coaching staff miss him, the players miss him, but you know, we got to continue what we've been doing our whole lives is playing basketball. Steve McGarvey, Associated Press. To any of you, just what's Kevin's message been to the team since his role kind of changed from assistant to being the guy in charge? Let's start with uh, Tari and then uh, Darius and Xavier, please. Anyway, um, the message has been play basketball, like Darius said. When we play basketball, we've been playing basketball our whole lives. I mean, we can only control what we can control, and we're, we're players. We don't make the big boy decisions in the offense, so we just play basketball and keep the same goals and objectives. Xavier, Darius, scoring the basketball is going to be really important in this one. What do you guys need to do to put points up? Basically just, you know, start doing, going back to the things that we did at the beginning of the season, um, locking in better on defense, you know, being more solid, you know, Cutting off on second chance points on the other team, getting the ball out in transition and getting to their rim. Um, not trying to settle for too many threes early in the game or, you know, kind of late in or middle of the game. Uh, Darius, uh, Coach Nickelberry told us that you um, talked to the team the other day. Uh, Coach Wade always preaches control the things you can't control. What, did you, what was your message to the team? Basically, you know, this situation happened before, so just be solid and, you know, continue. Let's keep doing the same things we've been doing. You're playing hard and loving each other and playing for each other. And if we continue doing that, you know, sky's the limit for our team. And just continue to love each other and just, you know, just lean on each other. Darius, Kofi Riley from the Daily Advertiser. I was curious, what lessons did you, did, ha did you learn from that first time Coach Wade wasn't there for you guys in the tournament that you can sort of apply to now for these younger guys who weren't there in 2019? Good question. Um, that, around that time, I wasn't really playing much. You know, I was really outside looking in, coming off the bench with me and some of the other guys. But this time around is completely different. You know, it's my senior year. You know, I would love to coach with the way to be here with us. Um, you know, some things just don't work out how I plan. So, you know, it's, things happen. Things happen, you know. We miss him. I'm going to continue saying that. We miss him. You know, we wish him the best. You know, and we just wish he was here with us. Xavier, Randy Peterson from the Des Moines Register in Iowa. Do you have any kind of relationship with, with George Condit? And if so, you know, talk about that a little bit. Uh, I mean, yeah. We played, a, played against each other in high school, played with each other in a couple camps and all-star games and stuff. Uh, we have a good relationship, kind of a brother-like relationship. But, I mean, once you suit up in different uniforms, uh, you know the rest. I mean, got to play hard against each other. Uh, Tari, this is your, your first NCAA tournament. I guess uh, just how much have you uh, taken in this moment? Man, this is this is amazing. You know, I'm not taking anything for granted. Uh, I, I'm just trying to soak up, you know, everything and every little just moment. Uh, just not yet, like you said, not taking for granted. This is this is special. So I'm happy to be here, and I'm excited to get to work. Uh, Billy Witz with the New York Times. Tari, can you describe just how this week is? different in 
the ter I, I guess in the terms of, of Coach Wade and Coach Armstrong aren't there, and who's filling their roles? What would they normally be doing during preparation for a tournament like this? Um, yeah, this week has been a little hectic, obviously, with um, the, the new uh, changes in the staff. But um, I feel like everybody's doing their part to step up. All the uh, assistant coaches, even the players, our leaders, we're just all doing our part to try to step up and you know, try, the, try to fill that missing piece. Like, like uh, we, uh, Darius said before and you know, Xavier, we, we miss them. So we're just trying to uh, all step up and uh, rally together to make this a special run. Uh, Darius, do you feel like in this game y'all are going up against a, a mirror image of yourselves, being the fact that both teams started off high and cooled off and that y'all both like to get after it defensively? That's true. That's definitely a good question for sure. Um, at this point in the year, it really doesn't matter who we, who we play. Um, Speeding the image or not, you know, we're just trying to go out there and score more buckets than the other team and come out on top. So, you know, we're not taking anybody lightly. You know, we're locked into the, the scouting report and the other team, Iowa State. So, you know, exactly what you said, I mean, it, at this time, it really doesn't matter. So we just want to go out there and play hard and, you know, come out with the win. Just wondering, with Kevin, what has he been, what have he been like as an assistant coach for you this season? Just what's the biggest thing y'all learned from him? And how does this head coaching background Spent many years as a head coach. How has that kind of helped in this situation he's in now, do you think? Uh, I mean, I think Kevin is doing a uh, – Coach Nickelberry. <laughs> I think Coach Nickelberry is doing a good job stepping up and not really mimicking what we used to do, but trying his best to alter what he can and try to – like he, like we talked about the last six minutes today, he's trying to get us to get better shots, stop fouling. I mean, I think he's doing a very good job of – Picking up where Coach left off at and trying to tweak a little things to make sure that we are still getting better. Well, Xavier, piggybacking off of that, not just with the X's and O's, but how does Coach Nickelberry differ and you know, maybe the mentor approach and how things may be different with his leadership now? Um, it's pretty more straightforward, uh, I feel like. Uh, Coach Wade, you kind of, it's hard to say. I, I've been with Coach for a minute, and we just got with Coach Nickelberry. So Coach Wade, you kind of know what he wants. I mean. Since it's being pretty new of Coach Nickelberry being in the head coaching position, it, we don't exactly know everything he wants, but he's kind of straightforward with telling us what he needs and what he wants and how he wants it to be. Uh, Darius, the, when, when uh, the coaches were fired over the weekend, the statement from the university president and the athletic director referred to like a cloud of negativity that had been around the program. Being inside, I guess, did you feel that same way over the last few years, or was it a different feeling within that locker room? That's a, that's a really good question. Good thing that you said that, because, you know, a lot of people may feel like it's a dark cloud around LSU basketball, but, you know, that's just how how's it been since I got there. And, like, you know, we had a couple shirts made, you know, LSU versus the world. So at all times, that's how we feel, LSU versus the world. So, I mean, that's just what it is. Anything else for the student athletes right here? Uh, just sort of a question for all, all y'all. Um, since Coach Nickelberry is also the recruiting coordinator for the team, so what, so what kind of unique relationship does, have, does uh, a lot of the guys, especially the younger guys, have with Coach Nickelberry in terms of um, that, that intimate relationship as the, recruiting as the recruiting coordinator? That's a good question. I feel like all of us, um, Coach Nickelberry is a very – Serious man, let's let's I mean let me say that first. But second, he's a very like I don't know, he's pretty funny, like he's pretty goofy. So we're all like close with him. We all talk to him, we all have a great relationship with him, like a, a uncle or a father figure. So I mean, I feel like we all just relate to him in any way and with him being a recruiter position and then stepping up to where he is now, it's kinda like we have a, a close friend or a close close guy who's old enough to watch over us, coaching us. I guess. For all of you, how has this brought you guys together, even tighter? Oh, we um, <clears throat> immensely. I mean, like like Darius said, you know, there have been shirts in the past that said LSU versus the world before the season started. Um, it was LSU versus everybody. Um, we 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 had meetings before the season, just kind of how to, on how to kind of. Uh, make our bond tight and, and make us a really close knit group. So I think that 
you know, when adversity hits, the best thing about this team is that, you know, we come together and we, we only get stronger. Tari, Tari, how important has Darius, how, how important has Darius' leadership been for you guys this season? How much more important is it now after what's sort of gone on the last week? I mean, I mean, Darius has been huge, obviously X2. They've, they've been great leaders um, uh, from the beginning, from the jump. I think that now uh, his leadership has obviously stepped up even more. I think just just like I said previously, you know, with the with the changes in staff and a little bit of uh, uncertainty going around, I think our leaders have done a great job in stepping up and 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 accepting that role of just trying to be, you know, positive and, and get guys where they're supposed to be and get us in the right spots. I think that they've just they've been huge. All right, gentlemen, thank you. Good luck. Kevin Nickelberry, LSU interim coach Kevin Nickelberry is at the podium. If you have questions, please. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Nick. Uh, Nick, right here in the front. Um, I know, I know you, earlier in the week, uh, Sunday night, you said obviously your goal was to keep the team together and you know, um, get them to focus on the job at hand. Was, you know, and, and um, just make sure things flowed smoothly. Has, has everything gone the way you thought? It was a little easier, maybe a little harder? Uh, the first day was a little, little tough, obviously. You know, new voice. You know, they've heard a certain voice for most of the year. And um, so the first day was tough, but we had two good days after that. And, uh, and I think the guys 
understand this moment. I mean, uh, this time of year, it's about moments. And I, I think we got guys on our team who are ready for the moment. And we just got to go out tomorrow, and we got to prove it. How much have you relied on Darius's leadership the last couple of days, and what has he meant to this program? Well, he's been huge. I mean, obviously, uh, when the first day when when I talked to the media back in Baton Rouge, I told him I asked Darius to be our fullback, be my fullback, and go in and talk with the team. And and you know, he's 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 the one person who was here the last time we were, LSU was in this situation as a freshman. Uh, when Coach Wade wasn't uh, coaching the team, and uh, so he's under, he understands the uh, the pressure and the, and the media and the expectations associated with it, and they were very successful. So I'm, I asked him to go out and be my fullback. I'm, I'm slow, but I asked him to open up the hole, and I can go in and and and, and try to uh, put us in a position to be successful. And uh, Darius has done, uh, excuse me, has done a great job this week, uh, making them understand what's in front of us. You know, not forgetting that this is still the NCAA tournament and no one in that room, uh, players, managers, coaches, don't deserve to be there. We were all part of this year, and they deserve to, to go out tomorrow and have a chance to, uh, to win. What's special, what's special about the bond of this team and how they always perform when overcoming adversity? They, they've been unbelievable, to be honest with you. I mean, I told them the day after practice today, I, so, you know, the most important thing for us is that we have both feet in the boat. Now, I can't promise them if it's going to be a cruise ship's move or a, a, a little rowboat on the, in the middle of a swamp, rocky. But we need all feet in. We need all, everyone's both feet in the boat. And if we do that, we're going to be together. And we can get through anything if both feet are in, if we have everybody's feet together, together locked in with one objective, which is to go out. And with that, whatever happens on the game, you know, which is going to be some adversity. It's going to be a six-over run. It's going to be one way or the other. We, you know, we hope to have the, the lead with six minutes to go, and, and we get into our, what we practice, the six-minute game, and, and stay together and uh, believe in each other and love, love each other, and, and we'll have a chance. Uh, and, and, again, like I said, young men are resilient. This is basketball. You know, there's a lot more going on in the world than, than this. I mean, a lot of tougher things with social media, uh, a lot of things going on in, in the in other countries that are a lot tougher than this. And, uh, and I made those guys understand this is a great opportunity. It's a shining moment, and they need to step, in that, step into that light and be, be themselves. Steve McGarvey, Associated Press. I'm just wondering, the fact you've been a head coach for several years before this, how much has that kind of helped in kind of adjusting to this role, or is, it, is there a similarity in that regard? Well, I mean, it's, again, it's a new voice, but, again, I, like I said, I spent – Half my career as a head coach, so uh, you know how to talk, uh, how to plan, how to direct. Uh, you know, in the system we use is a system that we use. It's a family system. We, you know, uh, when the coach is with us, we're together. A couple of adjustments, but it's something I'm familiar with, and you know, we'll, we, we won't make a lot of changes. Obviously, we we'll make some slight adjustments, uh, but uh, you know, it's something I, I was familiar with, and again. Uh, I, you know, I didn't think I would be a head coach again. I was, uh, I, I was content with being an assistant in, in my career. But you know, God sometimes has dif different plans for you. And you know, and in this, in this moment, this is what we can control this week. I told the team we can control this week. Next week, you're gonna have a lot of guys looking for jobs, or playing for, for auditioning for new coaches. You're gonna have coaches looking for jobs. This week, we can control. We can control what happens this week. And we're going to live in this week and live in this moment and control what we can. Hey, uh, Kevin, Jared Paul, Joseph, Fox 44 in Baton Rouge. You talked about already how you, you've been a head coach before, but first time head coach for an SEC school and the face of a school heading into the NCAA tournament. How do you think you've handled this and what newness do these experiences bring to you? Well, I don't know how I've handled it. I mean, you have to, you know, you guys got to be the judge of that. And, and tomorrow we'll see. I mean, I, my, my only goal, I, I haven't really thought about wins and losses yet because I, 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 have, I have three sons, and uh, two of my sons are close to their age, 
And so the first thing I had to think of like a father, I had to, what, what are they going through? What are they thinking? How are they feeling? I had to talk to parents. I had to make sure that they knew I had their sons back. That was the first thing, to be a father for a couple of days and make sure that they understand that we're in this together. We're going to get through this. This two, this two shall pass. That was my first goal. Today, we, you know, we worked on thinking about winning, winning basketball games. So I'm not judging myself on if we win or lose. You know, we have the players to win. We have the talent to win. You know, I want to make sure these guys come through and with their spirits high and that they can, you know, they can rebound on the other side. If that happens, you know, I'll sleep at night. I've had a wonderful career, you know, and, uh, and, and, and so uh, that's all I'm going to do in this moment right now. Kevin Batiste, WAFB-TV. Uh, as far as Iowa State goes, uh, what's going to be the key to uh, containing their two guards, Brockington and Hunter? Well, you know, a lot of, a lot of times – Coaching goes out the window. I watched some exciting games last night in the first round, uh, the Notre Dame game, and it comes down to players. At the end of the day, you can draw up whatever you want. Players are going to win. You know, a lot of times when you talk about shining moments, they're, you know, they're, they're pictures of players who made big plays. You know, we're going to have to have some players make some big plays tomorrow, and, and a lot of times it comes down to the Jimmys and Joes, and their Jimmys and Joe, Hunter, Hunter and Brockton are good. So we're going to have to contain them. We're going to have to make them uncomfortable. We're going to have to make someone else beat us. And you know, we worked on that today. And, and our Jimmys and Joes are going to have to step up. You know, we, we have guys that are good as well. You know, we have some really good players. Um, and I, I, I'm expecting Easton and, and Days and, 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 and Pinson and Murray to have great days. And, and uh, you know, so you know, we'll see what happens. We'll put our guys against their guys, and we're going to see what happens. Kevin uh, Sheldon Mickles at the Advocate in Baton Rouge. The, um, the players were talking a little bit about the T-shirts, uh, LSU against the world and LSU versus everybody. Um, how, how big are you on the motivational one? Did you have to use a lot of that this week to try to get them prepared? And also, did they have to dig the T-shirts out of their locker or you, you got some new ones made? This week? Uh, no, we didn't, we didn't dig any T-shirts out the locker. Right now, you know, the, you know, the, I really feel that the, the best way to win in situations like this and is to uh, is to bring everybody who you know is in your corner. And the most and the, and the people, you know, like I said to someone the other day, you know, I spent th three years walking through my building, saying hi to the concierge and walking in. And hey, you know, I spent three day, two days stopping and having to talk to everybody, and because people love LSU, so you know. It, I'm not sure if it's us against the world. It's, you know, we're going we're gonna to play for those letters, those three letters on the front of our jerseys. We're going we're gonna to play for the people who stopped us in the hallway and said good luck. We're going to play for the, 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 the uh, boosters and the parents and the, uh, the fan in, in 104. We're going to play for the people who have told these kids, we believe in you, good luck. That's what we're playing for. We're playing for what's on our, ch our chest. We're playing for LSU. So I'm not sure if, if that answers your question, Sheldon, but... And a lot of people have supported these young men, and I, I can't control the st situation they're in. But I, I know that a lot of people have supported us, especially the LSU fan base, which has been unbelievable. That they have supported us, and 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 because and, and, obviously it's a different person leading right now. And you know, I was expecting, oh my God, who is this dude? Who is this guy? You know, you, you know, I'm not Will Wade. I'm not Will Wade. I'm Kevin Nickelberry, and I can only be myself. And that's what I'm going to be all week. I'm going to be that person for these guys for LSU. Coach, yep. Cokie Riley from the Daily Advertiser. I, I was curious as to, oh, oh did, I, did I cut off? Okay. Uh, Coach, Cokie Riley from the Daily Adver Advertiser down here. Um, Coach, I was, I was curious as to uh, what, your, uh, what, what your leadership style is. Uh, the first 15 years of my, the first years of my career as a head coach, as an assistant or and a head coach, you know, I lived on with every possession. You know, I was a fire and brimstone type of guy. You know, I lived in every possession. Uh, the last years of my co uh, years coaching and, and my three years here as an assistant, you know, I'm the rah-rah guy. I'm the guy who gets some guys going. I'm the guy in the huddle first to make sure they understand we'll make it. We're going to win this game. So, you know, it's going to probably be a lot different look. I mean, I'm, uh, you know, uh, uh, I'm more of a, uh, hey, we got this type of guy, you know. I'm not, uh, you know, I, I'm a, I may be the first one out there on, on, running on the court, chest bumping some goodbye. I'm not going to change giving everybody my personal handshake that I do before every game. I'm, I'm not going to change my role to them because I think that's too much for them. 
You know, I'm going to still be who I am. I'm going to be uh, myself. You know, just different is I'll be calling the plays or I'll be calling the defenses. That's, that's all that's going to change. Uh, Ke Kevin, Billy Witz from the New York Times. Um, did, when you took this job, the, the investigation was already going on into uh, to LSU. The, the stories had been out about Will Wade making the uh, strong ass offer. Did you have any trepidation about jumping into a situation like that as, as an assistant coach? Uh, again, I, I don't know if that helps these young men tomorrow. I mean, I mean, we could talk about that next week, <laughs> within the future. I mean, that, I don't want to talk about anything regarding the investigation or anything like that. Again, you know, I came here uh, to help, 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 help a friend be a mentor to help help them through a tough situation as we, we've all probably done in our lives. And unfortunately, what's happened has happened. And I can't, you know, they can't look back and I can't look back. All I can do is look forward to tomorrow. Last one. John Steppe from the Cedar Rapids Gazette. What challenges do you expect Iowa State to pose for you on the defensive side of the ball? Well, they, they do an unbelievable job of team guarding. They load to the basketball. Uh, they, they, from a terminology standpoint, they love the ice keep you on one side of the floor. We have to move the basketball a little bit more tomorrow. You know, we, we tend to, 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 to play more isolation basketball in the past, but we probably going to have to, they're not going to let us do that as much. We're going to have to move the basketball. We're going to have to move bodies and move the ball and let the ball, the, let the ball find shots tomorrow, you know, uh, for a team that, you know, that, you know, they, you know they, they don't get as many steals as we do, but they get as many stops as we do. So we got to definitely play, have our best, game of, of offense tomorrow to, 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 uh, to beat Iowa State. Coach, thank you. Good luck. Thank you so much. A reminder that a recording of this press conference is available in the NCAA Digital Hub, ncaa.veritone.com. That's V-E-R-I-T-O-N-E. -E. Transcripts will be available as soon as possible and will be posted shortly. Our next session is at 3.30 with the Wisconsin Badgers student-athletes.